allylic halogenation. So this reaction is a way to add a halogen, so it adds a halogen to the allylic position. So we first need to recall what is the allylic position. So this is a carbon atom that is adjacent to a pi bond. So that's what we call an allylic carbon. And you may recall that the carbons of the alkene themselves, so these two carbon atoms here, are known as vinylic carbons. And so the allylic carbon ends up being more reactive than just a normal sp3 hybridized carbon atom because a lot of your reactive intermediates that you form at this position can be resonance stabilized by the adjacent pi bond. And so if we're wanting to introduce a halogen at this position, so let's take a look at a simple allylic molecule, just this one propene. And the halogen we're going to be adding here is bromine. So we want to find a way to add a bromine to that allylic position. So this is going to be a radical reaction, much like radical halogenation. And so with radical halogenation of an alkane, the reagent that we used was molecular bromine. In this case though, where you have this allylic system, you have an alkene in your starting material and you still have an alkene in the product. So you want to make sure that the alkene does not react. So if we wanna make sure that that alkene doesn't react, we wanna avoid reagents that might add across the pi bonds. So we wanna make sure that we don't have Br2, which could add to give us the dibromine, the dibromide, or HBr, which could add across that alkene to give us um, an alkyl halide, one that does not contain the pi bond because the pi bond would react. So we want to have no or very little of these two reagents. And so to do this reaction, we just use a different reagent as the source of the bromine radical. So we need a different reagent to provide that bromine radical. And so the reagent that we use for this is a reagent known as NBS. So NBS and something to initiate this radical reaction is the conditions that we need. So something like heat or light. Okay. And so what NBS is, is n bromo succinamid and so it has this general structure. Okay, and this bromine nitrogen bond is a weak bond. And so this is the bond that can cleave with light or heat to give us a bromine radical. So this can cleave and you're gonna get two radicals, only one of which we're going to be concerned with, and that is the bromine radical. Um, so this provides a low concentration of bromine radical. And then this bromine radical can react with your alkene at the allylic position. So once we have it formed, we're going to abstract a hydrogen from this molecule to give us a more stable the most stable radical that we can form, which in this case will be at the allylic position where it can be resonance stabilized. So we have hydrogens here, we have a bromine radical. And so this bromine can combine, the bromine radical can combine with the hydrogen. And then the other electron from that carbon hydrogen bond will end up on the end carbon atom. 
So giving us this allylic radical, um, which is resonance stabilized. We can move it to the other side of the allylic system. And we're also forming a little bit of HBr. Right. And we mentioned earlier, we want to keep the concentration of HBr low. So we need to recognize that at any given point in time, we only have a very small amount of radicals present. Um, this is a chain reaction. So you generate a little bit of radical, it starts the reaction with a tiny bit of your starting material, and then it just keeps going back through the cycle. Um, so the way that we generate more bromine radical to keep um, this cycle going is in the following step. Okay, so once we have this resonance stabilized allylic radical, if this is to react with some molecular bromine, then these will combine. So we can combine this bromine with this radical and we will generate a little bit of bromine radical again here. So we formed the allylic bromide, and we formed a little bit more bromine radical that can continue through this cycle. And so this reaction works well um, if you've got something nice and symmetrical. So notice if either one of these two resonance structures were to react, you would get the same allylic bromide as the product.